Before I get into this video, I want to remind you that we have a giveaway going on right now for a Hylian Shield replica, two copies of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition, also two Legend of Zelda Switch OLEDs. It is a kickoff giveaway for our Prime Gaming Fest, which we will have details on by the end of this week. That being said, just head down to the pinned comment or the link down in the description. Enter. It's free to enter. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel because it is a subscriber giveaway. By the way, <laughs> we're on our road to 133,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and drop a like on this video. And maybe go down in the comments and let me know what game you're looking forward to next. I don't care what platform it's for, it's just what game are you looking forward to next. Now let's dive into the news today because we got four stories for you guys, timestamps all below. Let's dive into the first one because Nintendo did something interesting. So Nintendo and Valve sort of teamed up over the weekend or really last week, late last week, to block Dolphin releasing on Steam. Now, this story ended up getting misreported in a lot of places and the too long, didn't watch version of the 17 mini video I put out over the weekend on it is basically, Valve reached out to Nintendo and said, hey, what do you think about Dolphin releasing on our platform? Nintendo said, ah, we think it violates DMCA. Can you please remove it? Valve goes, sure and they use their terms of service that allows them to remove anything to remove it. Nintendo never actually filed a legal takedown, so there isn't anything legally Dolphin can do to respond because it was removed due to Valve's TOS, not due to Nintendo taking legal action. That being said, Nintendo did issue a response to Kotaku, who reached out to them for comment, and here is what they had to say. Nintendo is committed to protecting the hard work and creativity of video game engineers and developers, a spokesperson for Nintendo told Kotaku in an email. This emulator illegally circumvents Nintendo's protection measures and runs illegal copies of games. Using illegal emulators or illegal copies of games harms development and ultimately stifles innovation. Nintendo respects the intellectual property rights of other companies and in turn expects others to do the same. Obviously, Nintendo doesn't do themselves any favor with the court of public opinion when they are this strict. This isn't a statement that's really surprising. We know how much Nintendo dislikes emulators and dislikes ROMs. So this is really par for the course for what Nintendo typically does. But it is something that just makes people get more and more frustrated with Nintendo. And them trying to state that emulators themselves are fully illegal is questionable at best. Technically, there's only ever been one lawsuit over emulators that Sony lost back in 1999. However, that was over a very specific use case of emulators having to do with firmware and a BIOS. We haven't actually seen emulators fully defended in court, mostly because video game companies are probably afraid to take them to court in case the courts just completely favor emulators, screwing over these video game companies. Or, you know, the emulator people fearing that they're going to actually favor the companies and suddenly emulators become illegal themselves. So there's also some controversial stuff within the Dolphin emulator that's including Wii keys and like decrypting games, which is also still questionable legally. We don't actually know because it's never gone to court. Like most things with emulation, most of it's never gone to court. So emulators aren't blanket legal. They're also not blanket illegal. It's more of a completely gray territory, and this is Nintendo's stance on it. All right, diving into our next story, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh boy, Tears of the Kingdom remains number one for the third week in a row. How amazing is that? Wow, three weeks in a row at number one in the UK? How did that happen? Well, all this information comes from Christopher Dring. The sales have actually declined 50% week over week, and yet it still remains number one. Now, Breath of the Wild itself actually climbed from number eight to number seven, but one interesting note on Tears of the Kingdom sales, these are only boxed sales, this doesn't include any digital data, is it has already almost surpassed Hogwarts Legacy's box sales in the UK, which is the current best-selling game in the UK this year. So maybe even one more week, even if Tears of the Kingdom loses its number one spot, might still put it ahead of Hogwarts Legacy. So that's extremely impressive for the Zelda series to pull off. Naturally, Hogwarts Legacy is going to be a really popular game in the UK. It's also a very good game, so it's worth the popularity. But yeah, very interesting to see what's happening with Tears of the Kingdom. And I'm just... 
Excited to see those sales continue to rise. We'll get updated data later this week to find out if it's still number one in Japan as well. So our next story deals with Live Alive or Live Alive or Live Alive. I don't, you know what? I never really figured out how to pronounce it. You guys can let me know down in the comments below because Live and Live are spelled exactly the same. So what do you want me to do with that? It is what it is. Well, there might be a sequel coming for the game. The game actually never originally had a sequel, but this comes from an official Square Enix Q&A where the game's producer, Takashi Tokita, when asked if there could be a Live Alive 2, said the following. If the upcoming PlayStation slash PC launch can combine for a million in sales, and you add that to the Switch sales, of course, it gives him confidence to ask Square Enix for permission to make another one. In other words, the upcoming release on PlayStation and PC, if they can somehow get to a million in sales, they are willing to go to Square Enix and be like, hey, can you fund another one of these? I think they just want to get into that Octopath Traveler uh, situation where it sells a million every time you do that. It actually encourages Square Enix to invest and allow him to make another one. Now, a sequel has never existed for this IP before. This was an old game getting remastered and coming back. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here. But it was a fantastic game. It introduced a lot of people to this game for the very first time last year. And I really hope it does get a sequel. So here's hoping that Live Alive actually sells well on the competition's hardware. Now, next up is our last story, but one that I've actually got a bit of a statement on. But we got to get into the details because a new class action lawsuit has spun up to go after Nintendo for Mario Kart Tour. Now, Mario Kart Tour for a little while featured a gotcha-style mechanic to get new characters, carts, and gliders on what well, I was like a pipe system. I can't remember what it was called. Some sort of warp pipe or whatever. It was just a loot box. Let's just call that what it is. And you spend in-game gems, uh, and you could just get like random stuff. And those gems could be earned, but are also primarily bought via actual real world money. Now, the potential class action lawsuit was filed by a father on behalf of his son, who's a minor, stating that the system promoted using dark patterns, which is a term for tricking consumers into spending money. There's actually some exact definitions of it. And at the time of me reporting on this, the FTC does not consider gotcha mechanics, random awards for spending money, to be a dark pattern as defined by the law. Now, the suit alleges the minor spent over $170 with the father's credit card, which was attached to the child's Nintendo account. Nintendo discontinued Spotlight Pipes, I guess that was the name of it, in September of last year and replaced it with a more traditional shop where you spend money for exactly what you want. This is one of many lawsuits over gotcha mechanics in games, notably one last October went in favor of game maker Take-Two. Companies have gotten in trouble for dark patterns in many places in the world, but again, gotcha mechanics specifically are not considered to be a dark pattern legally at the moment. That is, while it's argued to be a form of gambling, unlike real world gambling, you always get something for your money versus losing your money the majority of the time you gamble for no return. Now, the reason we know about this lawsuit is because it has appeared in federal courts and we'll see what happens. We, you know, I don't really know what's going to happen with the suit. Is Nintendo going to win? Is Nintendo going to lose? Right now, there's been many of these class action lawsuits or other lawsuits filed against gotcha mechanics. And so far, none of them have actually gone in favor of people complaining about them. And I think there's a key reason why it's not going in favor, at least right now. They Some places have been trying to push it for a while. I mean, FIFA, they've been trying to stop FIFA and their gotcha mechanics for a long time and yet still aren't able to do it completely. So let me explain why this might be the case because the idea isn't that adults are choosing to spend money. That's not what's making these gotcha mechanics stop. The idea is that it's minors spending money and often spending their parents' money. Now here is where I chime in and this is gonna make me look like I'm in favor of gotcha mechanics and I wanna be very clear. I don't really enjoy gotcha mechanics. I don't find them to be useful. I think it's a, just a, a, a dumb way, a sleazy way, a lazy way to make money. But it works, and some people love it. Fire Emblem Heroes uses it. Dragalia Lost used it before that got shut down. Uh, there was a little bit where you know, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. So I get it. Like This is a mechanic that's very popular, especially with free-to-play games or whatever. But here's my thing with the whole gotcha mechanic thing. And this whole, should it be legal, should it be illegal, or really why parents in particular are going after these companies. 
I am tired of parents blaming companies for their children using their credit card. Let's be real. That's what this lawsuit's about. Why was your credit card connected to your son's Nintendo account? Which is strange. You actually don't need to use a Nintendo account to buy things on mobile devices. You usually go through the app stores. Your charge goes through the Google Play Store. It goes through the uh, Apple App Store. You don't really need it attached to the Nintendo account. I don't know how relevant it being attached to the Nintendo account really was. But regardless of how it was spent, whether it was spent through a Nintendo account or spent through an app store, parents, and I am one, so I feel like I could speak directly to this. I have children ripe in the age to be manipulated by these games. I've got a seven-year-old, I've got a 10-year-old, I've got a 12-year-old. Ripe in the age to be completely manipulated by all these mobile games. My kids have tablets, they do play them. These mechanics do exist in some of the games. And you know how my children aren't really worried about it? Aren't really addicted to those mechanics of spending money? I don't let them participate in those mechanics. I think parents forget what it means to be a parent. When I was a kid, we didn't have the gotcha mechanic stuff, but what we did have was the ability to sneak things and break the rules and do things we weren't supposed to do. Or, gosh forbid, pick up a telephone and call certain hotlines that charge you per minute or even sometimes per 30 seconds and rack up phone bills. I did that once when I was a kid. There are so many ways that kids could you know, do these sorts of things. And yes, today it's worse. It's even easier for kids to do some of these things, but it's only easier if a parent isn't doing their job. This lawsuit exists because a father's credit card was used to spend over $170 on a game. How that child had access to the credit card isn't being debated here. However, oftentimes it comes up in the court cases, and this is often the case why companies win these lawsuits. Why the hell did the child have access to your credit card? That's a fair question. We are in a world where all the controls, even through Nintendo's own account system, exist to block charges. My children can't spend a dime without me knowing. Heck, right now my children can't even install an application on their tablets without me knowing because I have to manually approve it because I set up all their devices. This is the crazy thing about all of this is it creates the excuse for a lack of parenting, a lack of paying attention to what your child is doing, a lack of knowing what your child is into. If you don't know what games your child is playing, what applications your child likes to use, that is on you as a parent. If you don't know that your child is racking up charges on your credit card, how do you not know since your child shouldn't have access to spending money on your credit card? They shouldn't be able to add a credit card because you can lock down the devices to prevent that. So them stealing your credit card to spend it won't work. Oh, and on top of that, they shouldn't just freely be adding your credit card to children accounts and then allowing them to, like, there should always be password protections, uh, parental, having to go to a parental app and, and asking permission. The bottom line is, well, I don't actually like gotcha mechanics. Parents, step up. Be better. We live in the world of technology. If you are going to give your child access to your phone, their own phone, your tablet, their own tablet, do research and accept the responsibility of what that means. If I give children my phone, they not only need to have a face scan of me to buy something, they also need to have my fingerprint and they need to know a passcode. And if they know all three of those things or somehow get access to all three of those things, you know what? That's on me to update and fix it and see it right away. Which the thing is when my account gets charged, I get an email. So I would know literally within a day if someone spent money on my account. Now my children's devices, they can't do anything. They're completely locked down. They can only play the games I allow them to play. They can only play them for as long as I allow them to play. I have set play limits. Oh, and they definitely can't spend anything because there's no cards added to their account. If they want to buy something, it goes to the parent's account and then I approve it and I buy it for the child. It is so stupid that parents are passing off their responsibility as parents onto game companies. It is not Nintendo's responsibility to monitor your child. None of these purchases can be made without being 18 or older. If they're being made by a minor, that is on the parent for not paying attention to their kid.
not locking their kid down. It's not me being a strict parent. It's me being a smart one. Be smart, be better. What happens with this lawsuit? I don't know. I would like to see gotcha mechanics go away. But also, whether they go away or not doesn't excuse your responsibility as a parent. Because instead of spending money on gotcha mechanics, you know what he could have spent money on? He could have just bought stuff straight from the store and got exactly what he wanted and still spent hundreds of dollars. Maybe even more because maybe the kid would have wanted to buy everything in the Mario Kart Tour store. And I don't think that should be illegal. It's a free-to-play game. It's got to make money somehow. So yeah, have a store where you can buy things. Because children shouldn't be able to buy things. Can we just agree on that? If you are a child that needs a credit card, to, so you got to be 18 or older in the United States, you shouldn't be able to buy things. That's on the parent. That's all I have for you guys today, and I'll catch you in the next video.